Let's enjoy. Got it. Welcome to the Passover Film Festival. I am here with the director, Yonatan Nir, the poster, Achshali Gibor, my hero brother is right behind him. And um, we're excited to have you here as part of the Passover Film Festival. Um, Yonatan, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are, who you are, and uh, what led you to make this film. Um, I'm, 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 I'm an ordinary person from, from Israel, uh, and I'm a film director. Um, I'm in the business of, you know, uh, documentary filmmaking for the past uh, 12 years, 13 years before that I was a photojournalist for a couple of years. So I, I've been telling stories uh, as a profession for the past 15, 16 years. Um, I made six uh, feature length documentaries so far. My hero brother is the third or the fourth. Um, all my films are dealing with, with journeys, uh, uh, you know, of, of people who are uh, going through some kind of change or most of my films. And usually it's in nature. I, I found that, I find out that at least for me, nature have a therapeutic effect and I believe it in what we like to call docu-therapy, you know, how you, how the documentary film is a, is a part of a therapeutic process. Um, and my hero brother is, 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 a, is an example for the kind of work that I, you know, kind of stories that I'm attracted to, yeah. How did you, how did you get a, connected to the story from uh, my hero brother? Pure luck, you know, I, I, I grew up in a kibbutz and uh, in my class from a very young age, I grew up in, a, in the Beti El Adim, you know, in, the, in the, uh, the old system of the kibbutz where all the kids used to, you know, sleep together in one house, the children's house. And uh, in, in my age, there was a girl with Down syndrome for since I was, I think, six months old and until I was 16 years old, she was always with me. And later on my family from the side of my mother, we adopted a, a, a woman with special needs uh, as like a, an older sister to me. So it was a part of my life. And I always find people with special needs, just special, you know, just interesting, uh, always showed me a different perspective. Um, and I, one uh, night I was just watching TV and there was this amazing story about this dude named Enosh who took his brother Hanan to a uh, trek in the Himalayas and Hanan has Down syndrome. And I was like, really touched by the story. It was a report on the news. And, I, um, and about two years later, somebody called me and wanted to introduce me to this Enosh because apparently after this, um, um, after this report was was show uh, was a screen on the news on the Israeli news, and I started to receive many phone calls from people who basically asked him, you know, how can I do it with my brother, with my sister? So Enosh was kind of gathering them all together, together with uh, um, Itamar Peleg, who was the tour guide, uh, and they, you know, basically voluntarily. Uh, worked for two years to organize this group. They raised the uh, fund funding for it uh, from from good people around the world and companies and so on. And about a month before they went to the Himalayas, this connection was you know created. They knew my other films, Dolphin Boy and Cutting the Pain and the Essential Link, the story of Wilfred Israel. And they said you know you you could be. Um, a part of this uh, group and, and just come and document us. And I said, well, let's, I'll, I'll be honored to do so. And then I remember that I said, but my only condition is that I will meet everyone in Israel before we go out filming. And they said, because, you know, I don't want to just start filming in the, in, in the, in the terminal in, in, in Ben Gurion airport. Um, I need to create some kind of connection. And then Noshan Itama told me, no problem. Next Tuesday, we're going to meet all together in, um, in Vinget Institute to make some exams for the people with Down syndrome to see that they can 
climb to such high altitude. And I was like, great, I'm gonna meet them there. And I went to the Vingadis Institute with a small camera. I went into a room, there was like six, seven people with Down syndrome just sitting there waiting for their exams, physical exams. And I came to them to shake their hand and they were just running to me and hugging me. <laughs> and that was the moment when I said like, you know, I was a little bit embarrassed but after a while, I was like, that's pretty amazing. You know, I just came. They don't even know my name. They didn't ask me who I am. They didn't care about my gender, my age, my um, financial situation, my occupation, the color of my hair, the color of my skin, the color of my eyes. They didn't care about anything of that. They just, you know, came to me and gave me a big hug and told me that they love me after two minutes that they know me. And that's where, when I felt that, you know, there is a story to tell here. There is a lesson to learn here for me and hopefully also for the people who will watch the film later. And we went to India and the rest is history. <laughs> Amazing. So, so, and we've shown this film a few times and it's shown around the world. And um, this time we're showing it through our Passover film festival and um, watching it through the eyes of Passover and through, through that kind of scope. Um, I wonder if you could share a little bit, and I think what you're saying right now um, connects a little bit to some of the concepts of Passover for you. So where, where, where is that connection for you? Yeah, it was actually, you know, I screened this film and saw, I think it was in 60 different countries. It, you know, was all over the world. Millions of people have seen it, but no one ever asked me about the connection to Passover. And I had to think about it today. And growing up in a kibbutz, you know, um, uh, my knowledge about Judaism was very minimal <laughs> when I was a boy, but um, I think as the years passed, I realized that Passover is not just the amazing historical story about us becoming, you know, one one nation, one one people, and it's also a story about how um, we release or we 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 get ourselves out of slavery to freedom. And then the question is, what is slavery and what is freedom? You know, because even in the modern age, I think we're slaves to many, many, many things like this, for example, technology, um, slaves to what people think about us, uh, to success, what is success and so on. But one of our, I think, worst slaveries is, is the fact that we, we judge people and we judge ourselves too much and the main reason that the people with down syndrome taught me is to release this you know um need to 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 judge any any, any person that we meet every moment in our life we judge we compare it to our past we we think about the future and we forget to just be in the moment a non-judgmental accepting whatever comes to us and whomever comes to us with, you know, with open heart and with love, like the people with Down syndrome, that's what they do. They don't judge you and they don't judge, they don't judge, judge themselves so much. Um, so this is, if we could release a little bit of this judge, judgment that we have all the time, uh, which enslave us, you know, um, and, and doesn't let us really grow um, I think that that's one of the lessons. And the other lesson is something that we discussed before, you know, that, you know, like the people of, you know, like, 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 they, like, like our people, you know, uh, when we, when they let us, let us go and we went through the desert for 40 years, you need sometimes to go through a really difficult and tough journey in order to create this bonding between people and um sometimes people ask me you know why did you have to go to india and why couldn't you go just go to one day or two days here in israel and have this journey here but you know the, you know what would actually happen if we would do that is that the first night wherever whenever we would be in the desert in israel there is still usually cell phone uh, reception and they would call their parents and the parents would come and that, that would be the end of the trip 
So what we try to do here, or the organizer try to do here, is to really create this capsule, you know, um, in in time uh, where the brothers, the sisters are together dealing with with their own story, putting aside the parents and and just deal with their relationship with their brothers, with their sisters, and with their past. Um, and 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 be able to kind of make some cli- kind of closure with her, or maybe not even a closure, maybe to open a new a new uh, phase in the relationship. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I feel in the film that they go through change. They all go through some sort of transformation. Um, in their relationships within themselves um, through this trek and through this process. And, um, and th- that's something that very much connects to me, that, that transformation that one needs to go through, if it's from slavery to freedom, if it's from um, being free to being a people. Um, I think, I think there's, there's a power in, in taking a trek together and having this road exactly. trip experience. Did you find the road? If, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's what I, I, I would say. This is the essence of, of life for me. You know, the li- life is a journey. You know, and um, when you're surrounded by this amazing nature in the Himalayas, you know, when seven thousand five hundred meters, seven thousand, seven thousand two hundred, you know, all these huge mountains around you. Um, you also feel how small we are, you know, and uh, how great is this nature, universe, whatever you call it, how, how little we are compared to this um, power, you know, that, that is, you know, in most of my films, I go to this, to, I go to nature because this is where I feel that I'm developing and I'm, I'm changing. And I think a change, what you just said, is is, is the most important uh, thing in documentaries. You know, I came from photojournalism. And in photojournalism, you are, you try to capture the decisive moment, as uh, Robert Kappa once said, you know, there's one moment that tells the story or a couple of moments that tell the story. In documentary films, we look for this change. We, I believe that when a person is looking at the screen and is watching someone's changing, um, uh, you know, live in front of him, it, it empowers us to, to, to believe that we can change what we want to change in our lives. Because everybody has at least one thing that he want to change in himself, is that he want to develop um, in his own evolution, you know, as a human being. And um, yeah, it's, it's when you're going out on a journey, it just make everything faster and more extreme. And then the change can be, uh, you know, within three, four days of a trek, they were like different people. It was amazing, different relationship. That's, I mean, cinematically, that's the definition of drama is that change and having that. If everything's the same, there's no drama there. That's good storytelling. Um, tell me just before we finish, where are they today, and um, um, uh, do these trips continue? So that's my your brother continues. I mean, the 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 group is still together. In a week and a half, we're gonna meet. Oh, less a week and two days. I'm counting the days. We're gonna meet all together in a beautiful, very close to where I live in the northern part of Israel just to meet and uh, three or four months ago we went with them on a um how do you call it kadu poeach flying balloon how do you uh, a hot air balloon hot air balloon uh so we keep um you know we keep this group together and they keep themselves together because it was it became like a family you know most of them never knew another person who has a brother or sister with down syndrome and suddenly they're like a, a a group of people that really went together through a difficult time or, or a challenging time, but did it, you know, they, they went to the summit of this 3,500 meters peak 
in the Himalayas uh, against all odds, and they, they did it with their own with their own power, and and they were so proud about it. So there, um, the connection stays until today, which is really really great. Um, and there's other things that happen with this um, with this uh, film. For example, we do a lot of work in the educational system in Israel. Uh, Two hundred and seventy thousand uh, school children have seen this film wow. Wow. so far, which is like you know there's is uh, uh, unprecedented. You say ne nothing yeah. like that yeah. happened, have been never uh, have, have ever happened in Israel. Uh, it became part of the, the educational system in many, many, many cities in Israel. And we see a change, which is the great thing. You know, we, we're receiving all these letters from uh, teachers and from um, the city council here and there and say, you know, more volunteers that work, want to work with people with special needs. Letters that or emails that we get from kids that have brother with or sister with special needs and when we went to their school and screened this film and spoke with them afterwards, they were brave enough, you know, to, to bring brothers or sisters to, to, to their houses uh, because they have, you know, a special need brother and there was, they were embarrassed about that. And, and there's also some, there were also some trips of other families that watch the film and say, ah, that's a great idea. By the way, not only from Israel, from Scotland, from the United States, from France, from, uh, Canada, um, we just receive letters. You know, we watch this film here, we watch this film there. We just want to tell you that as a result of it, we decided to take a brother or sister uh, who has autism to three days in Paris. You know, it doesn't need to be the Himalayas. It doesn't need to be a big group and it doesn't need to be people with Down syndrome. Just the idea of doing something um, challenging in nature with someone with whom you have an unfinished business, uh, which is someone who's close to you, someone who you love, but you still have unfinished business. And then you go out there and something happened and it's a, it's a magic, you know? And uh, I, I feel very, very, very priv privileged to be a part of this film. I don't like to say that this is my film because I don't feel it's my film. I feel that it's a film that so, of so many people that were involved and mostly and first and foremost of the people with Down syndrome who were for me the inspiration, uh, like, a, like, a, like a lighthouse, you know, something that you, you yeah. know, a big try to, and to keep, yeah, to keep it simple. Uh, you know, one of the greatest, uh, this film was screened, it had its, its opening in the Santa Barbara International Film Festival, which is pretty, um big festival or important festival one week before the oscars so everybody goes there blah 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 and the film won the two main awards and uh, it's something that never happened in this festival and it's a pretty old festival and the person who gave us the award was um um the editor of forrest gump and um and there was a, a his name is arthur schmidt and uh, he's an amazing editor. He, he, I think he has two. No, uh, he has two Oscars. And when I went on stage and I got the, the the prize, I said that what we really try to do here is to bring the story as clean as possible, uh, with as little manipulations as possible, to be direct, to be authentic, to be honest, just like the people with Down syndrome. Because when you work with people with Down syndrome you can't be manipulative they will you can't be cynical they will catch it and they will not cooperate there are a few f uh, scenes in this film which are not in focus because i knew that this is this moment is happening right now and if i'll tr ask them to reenact it or to say it again it's not going to happen so i had to film as it was happening and when we edited we edited the film we also all the time thought about to be authentic, to be authentic, to be authentic, not to paint it in pink and not to paint it in black, you know, just to try to show the real colors of what it is to be a, per a person with, with Down syndrome and also what it is to be a brother or sister of a person with Down syndrome. And I hope it worked. It's wonderful. 
Um, let me just ask you, what are you doing for Pesach? What are you doing for your Passover? How do you spend? I guess we're going to all uh, be here in my with my family, you know, here in, I live in the northern part of Israel in a kibbutz, still in a kibbutz, but today the kibbutz is different than, than in the past. It's a privatized kibbutz. It's not communist or socialist anymore, um, which is okay, which is good, I think, for me. Um, but it's a beautiful area, and probably all the family will come, and we just celebrate in a, in our own way. You know, the 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 beautiful, um, yeah, the beautiful Passover. I think, yeah, getting out ourselves out of slavery and be authentic that's great Yonatan thank you so much thank, thank you, you very you. much and a beautiful film. see you in person one day hopefully <laughs> again Chag Sameach Yala Chag Sameach Toda Bye Bye Anachnu Anachnu Beseder Nachon Beseder Zer Toda Kavishelo Kavishelo Ya Och Midai No No No